Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! Um, joining me, I couldn't wait to talk to him. Um, I was approached by this man, I don't know, a few years ago, um, saying, hey, will you sit down and have a uh, lunch with me and talk about your experience on The View? And um, it took me all of two seconds to say, of course, Ramin Satuda. Did I say it correctly? You got it, yes. Hi, Ramin. How are you? Hey, Jenny. How are Good you? Good to see you again. Good seeing you, too. Okay. I haven't seen you since we had lunch that day. I know. Didn't I eat a lot? I think I did. No, you didn't. I you did? had, I think, like a salad. I did? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so odd of me. Usually I'm just <laughs> such the carnivore. Uh, congratulations on the book. Everyone's talking about it. Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View. Um, I must say, it's funny to hear people's reactions because I get so many people saying, um, your book is out. The, I'm like, it's not my book. I know. everyone. There, early on in the media, like there were all these reports that every co-host had written their own. It was very confusing. It was like everyone had written their own book, and that's not... It's my book. It's I, you your know, I, book. I interviewed everyone and, and spent three years working on it and talked to 11 of the co-hosts of The View. You did. You did the work, my friend. Now, you got 11 of the co-hosts. Who didn't you get so people know? The two that I didn't get that I really wanted to talk to you were Whoopi and Elizabeth Hasselback. Why didn't you get them? I'm not really sure. Whippy was originally going to do it and then changed her mind. Elizabeth ended up never responding to me, and then she wrote her own book, which came out last week. Oh, it did? Mm -hmm. And so Whoopi, I think she agreed to it, and then once she re-signed with The View, that's when she got tight. I think that's what happened, because she thought she was leaving the show. She was ready to leave um, a few years ago. Has she made a statement about anything in the book yet? Nothing. No. What did you think about Elizabeth's uh, reaction of this book. I thought it was kind of overblown. I thought, you know, if Rosie O'Donnell said she had a crush on you, wouldn't you just be like, oh, well, cool, that I'm like, I'm flattered by that. I thought Elizabeth kind of took it really far and seemed really offended, and I'm not really sure why. Do you think she wanted to create a little bit more controversy for her own book, or was it something that you think she was truly offended by because she's Elizabeth? No, I think she's Elizabeth, and she just truly doesn't want to have anything to do with Rosie anymore. Hmm. So who surprised you the most? I think you you kind of surprised me a lot, Jenny. Well, why is that? I thought you were what was so incredible about our lunch was that you were so completely open and willing to just talk about what your experience was on the show and what it was like on the show and very very honest about it. And also it wasn't I didn't think it was mean. We talked about this. I didn't think it was mean. You were just like this is what it was like. It was a crazy situation. It wasn't what I expected. I thought I was going to go in and talk about you know, reality TV and celebrities and Dancing with the Stars. And then I started and Barbara Walters didn't know who John Mayer was or Katy Perry. (laughs) And I just sort of didn't know what they wanted from me. And they wanted me to be political. And I'm not a political person. And, you know, Barbara was leaving. It was her last year. And she was having a hard time. And so it was just all really compelling and interesting. And I'd heard all that. But to hear it from you was really valuable. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I thought that's what you're supposed to do when you sit down with someone is be honest and frank. Um, I, I did find it funny. And I knew that going into it when I I sat down with you I said I want to be mindful because I know when you say words out loud and you tell a story it's much different looking in print you can't hear the person's tone you can't hear the side giggle so I knew that going into it and so I wasn't surprised of course when the media latched on to Barbara is getting ripped by Jenny McCarthy when I knew if you read the chapter you'd see that I had much respect for her and like the beginning uh, on the top of my show today I said I loved her and you can adore someone and be terrified of them at the same time 100% and I, I you know in the chapter you know it ends with you saying that you know you have no hard feelings about Barbara you respect her you know that she's a legend she was just having a hard time because she didn't want to retire I felt really bad for her did you have sympathy for Barbara knowing this whole story? 100%. I think there's she, I think that the thing about my book was that I wanted to do a true portrait of what she was like, but she's also a hero. She's a trailblazer. Yep. She was the first woman to ever, you know, co-host the Today Show. She was the first woman to ever um, do the nightly news. Right? She ma- paved the way for every woman that followed. But I also think that made her incredibly competitive because she had to fight so That's hard right. for every opportunity that she had that she had to sort of, you know, never ease up on the gas pedal. That's right. And one of the things that was so devastating for me being there the last year was watching the last week of Barbara's, well, I'll put it in quotes, last week on The View. But she was really asking, Whoopi, please let me have these final days as a moderator. She just wanted to go out as a moderator. And when Whoopi didn't want to let those days go or give her the opportunity, my heart broke. That was the most shocking to me. I think Whoopi should have let Barbara moderate her last few weeks on The View. 
I 100% agree. Because Barbara was obsessed with that moderator's chair. And you're not the only one that told me that. Like, I heard that from a number of people. Barbara really wanted to. She had created the show. She never made herself the moderator. She regretted it. And so she really wanted to moderate the show on her way out. She did. And I don't know why Whoopi wouldn't let her do it just for a little bit. I don't know either. And and in hearing everyone's stories, you didn't get a chance to interview Whoopi for this book. But what did you get? about Whoopi who is she based on everyone's stories I think that she too is complicated and I think that she you know got along with a lot of the co-hosts that were very deferential to her but I don't think she liked to be challenged and I think she had the most problems with Rosie O'Donnell because Rosie wanted to challenge her and wanted to change the show and Rosie felt like Whoopi had was kind of checked out and Rosie wanted to when she came back in 2014 Rosie wanted to change the show and Whoopi was like, it's fine the way it is. And that was the biggest, I think, um, clash that The View had ever seen after you after you left. They they never seemed to really um, become the show I think that they wanted to be. I, I think they 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 were like, a, you know when we date someone, mm-hmm. we would go, oh, I want to date a guy that likes to go out all the time. And then you date that guy, you're like, oh, I want someone that stays home. And then you stay, and then you get bored. Oh, I want someone that goes out all the time. I felt like that's how the view was. So like, they wanted to be a certain thing. They tried it out, and like, no, we want this in terms of being having a diversity or having um, someone talk about pop culture or politics. It was interesting from when I read the book and my own experience of them coming to me, hiring me as a pop culture person, and then um, wanting me to be political, and then I leave and Nicole Wallace comes in, and then they come to her and say, can you please talk pop culture? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what they wanted. They didn't know what they wanted. I mean, do they have they ever figured it out? I, I have a question for you about that, yeah. actually, because you know, ABC is in charge of this show. Do you think part of that is um, sexism in the entertainment industry? Because if men were running the show, would there be so much micromanaging and, you know, if men were on the show, would there be so much micromanaging and trying to tweak the format versus like The View is an incredibly like important cultural show. Why do they keep changing it? Was it because it was women on the show? Like I I, I wondered that as I was reporting it. I think it's a really great question to ask. And I would I would have to say, based on my point of view, it would be just as micromanaged if there was a man on that panel we were considering it at one point Mm -hmm. even bill getty was um you know trying some guys out and it was fun and it worked and i valued a male point of view who doesn't want to talk to a guy friend to get there what guys are thinking and um those men were just as micromanaged okay (laughs) as the women so that's where i was "Mm, i don't think that that's the case bill getty is someone that um i want to bring up because even though he's not necessarily a main character in this book. He's someone worth mentioning. He did sit down with you, correct? He did. We I talked to him probably more than I talked to anyone. We had a number of sit downs, and I, you know, we we sat down together in in California for hours and talked. I love Bill. Bill is someone that I think um, sometimes got a really bad rap. Mm-hmm. Um, when it was, I call it like the the, the red wedding at the, the View that the day when where there was like 17 people let go it was you and sherry to, on the <clears> same day same day yeah. and then bill and there was five other producers or something like that it was it was a lot of people and bill i remember um i, I felt so bad for sherry and bill like my heart broke for them i was only there a year it i knew it wasn't really my place to be but for bill to watch something like that be kind of shoved out the door after creating the show with Barbara the way they did. The way they handled pretty much anyone's firing was, I think, unprofessional. Would you say that? Yes. Right? <laughs> Terribly Terrible. And also, didn't they, like, tell you that it was okay? Like, they were going to keep... Like, they lied to you, right? They told you yeah, they were going to keep you, and then they didn't. ABC did. Towards the end of the season, um, I was getting all their offers to do shows and so my agent said will you let us know if this is working out because it doesn't feel like it is but let us know because we want to take these other jobs and take them and they said yeah well she's fine we're gonna bring her back we love her it was all a lie it was all a lie so we wouldn't take the next job 
So they were trying to keep you from doing something else. Correct. But they weren't even in, they wouldn't even want to keep you themselves. Correct. Which is shady. They shouldn't have done that. Very shady. Because uh, uh, Sherry was also looking at other opportunities. She was renegotiating at the time. So to keep someone, and I even said that to him. I go, you know, I'm a single mother with a special needs kid. Not that that's a reason to keep anybody, but to keep me away from getting other work when I have other TV offers and I turn them down is really shitty, which I've told face to face. But to go back to Bill, the last... Um, episode I think I was moderating at the time and it was for my my turn to say goodbye and it was the only time that anyone would mention Bill Getty and and a goodbye to him and I thought it was very odd that it was me who wrote it myself um, and looked at him uh, you know uh, across the camera and he's in tears and I'm going this is such an awful way to end this show for this man, for this girl named Jenny, who's not even on the show, you know, a full year, to be the one to be like, hey, thank you so much for what you've done. It was just, it, everything was just handled really poorly. Because he was there for 17 years. 17 he years. was the one that picked the original panel with Barbara Walters. He was the one that when Elizabeth Hasselback tried to quit during her commercial, he went and got her from a dressing room. He was the one that was there on the day of the Elizabeth Rosie fight. He was always there and he was always nice. trying to, you know, I know that Rosie had a lot of difficulties with him, but for the most part, all the other co hosts said he was there and he, he made sure that everything ran on time, the topics were right, everyone was, you know, the show was produced correctly, and you're right to then just get rid of him like in that way. Right. Although Bill says he wasn't fired, he says he was. You know, I think it was a matter of semantics, but he said it wasn't fired. He was. They weren't going to renew his contract. Okay. But um, but also the show imploded completely after Bill left, which was also a sign of how much he worked on that show because no one then knew how to That's do right. the show without him. Think about this. You know, and most people know, these are a bunch of crazy bitches. I mean, in a good way, alphas. Okay, I'll forgive the word alphas. But imagine having to be in charge of these women every single day. It takes a certain kind of person. And we saw that later on in your book as people were being fired and let go and they tried to have the news division come in. It was just a total shit show. Um, but I want to go back because I know we don't have that much time. But I want to go to um, talk about Rosie. Give me your interpretation of of her and what you got from other people about Rosie. You never overlapped with her, right? You never, did you, did, were you on? When she, I was a guest yeah. on the show. I think that um, Rosie, like a lot of um, the co-hosts in this book, are, was a very, is a very complicated person. And she is incredibly compelling on television. Her talk show in the 90s changed TV. It made daytime totally. a place for, you know, celebrities. She, you know, talked about her, Barbara Streisand and Tom Cruise and Broadway and you know that really wasn't done in daytime but she also was used to being in charge and she was used to calling all the shots and the view wasn't her show it was Barbara Walters's show and then when she came back the second time Whoopi was really in charge because she was the moderator and so she made life essentially hell for everyone because she was so frustrated all the time that things weren't going her way and when you spoke to Rosie did you kind of uh, bring this up of how other people felt about her and what was her reaction? I did, and she was um, she was very honest about it. She didn't think that they were doing a good enough job. She didn't think that the producers on the show were at the level they needed to be at. She thought that you know the staff was stale. She thought that no one would ever get fired on that show, and she wanted to make it better. And she was you know intent on making it better. And do you think she was right? I think that in some cases she may have been right, but I also think that her expectations were sometimes unreasonable. And she would get into all these fights, which are chronicled throughout the book with Mark Gentile, the show's original director. And, you know, she wanted shots a certain way. She didn't like how he, you know, she wanted to direct the show. But she was also the co-host and the moderator. And, you know, she couldn't do everything. But she had, she had a real, she had a lot of trouble letting other people do things. She wanted things done exactly the way she wanted so i i mean i can't speak for it because i was with rosie at the time i only know rosie as a, a friend and me being a guest on her show and i loved her to death um but i also um know that her and Whoopi were really enemies it was this. world war three it was the it was the worst the view had ever been when the two of them were on because they were fighting every single day it got so bad that rosie o'donnell would be backstage complaining to guests about how mean Whoopi was to her. Like, random celebrity guests waiting to go on were getting an earful from Rosie being like, this show, you know, sucks because Whoopi is so mean to me. 
That's how bad it got. And Rosie um, and Whoopi fighting also backstage and on stage. And on TV. And they weren't making eye contact in a lot of their debates. Rosie was like, you could tell she was upset watching her on TV, which is why I think it didn't work with her the second time. And she even told me that her doctor called her one day during a debate they were having about race in America and said he could see the artery in her neck and that she was having like a health crisis and she needed to leave the show. I did find it interesting when Rosie joined. I thought that those being two very strong alphas, Whoopi and Rosie, that they would be able to debate and go, you know, head to head in a in a great kind of debate. But I was um, I was surprised that uh, Whoopi came out as the actual alpha. That Rosie seemed to back down a lot of the time. Well, I think it also was that Whoopi was a moderator, so Rosie didn't have the ability to control the debates. And she said something to me that was similar to what you said, in that if Whoopi doesn't like what you're saying, she shuts down a debate. And Rosie believed, like I think you did, Mm -hmm. that if someone had a different point of view, that was the point of the show, and so they should debate. Correct. Rosie was furious that Whoopi wouldn't let them talk about Bill Cosby on The View. Rosie thought it was really important, but Whoopi was friends with Bill Cosby and for a long time didn't believe any of the women that had come forward. That was one of the hardest things about The View was not being able to put your point of view forward. Um, I will say, because I did say it to you also, that Whoopi would, um, you know, th- throw a commercial break just as you wanted to make <laughs> your point of view. And she had a very uh, dominating voice. I think I said in your book, not only like... Um, uh, it's sounding, but just it's it's scary, almost like fierce. You don't you don't want to fuck with her, you know. And it's also Whoopi Goldberg. She had that kind of same prestige as Barbara Walters. But when someone's in control of a panel of debate, you 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 don't have much choice but to follow the person. And I also heard that sometimes she'd be so frustrated with ABC or executives or some direction she was getting, and she would sometimes bring it to work, and it would be in the panel, and that's when she'd really cut people off. On those days when she was frustrated with what was happening behind the scenes, she was more prone to cutting people off or not letting people speak. That's 100%. Do you think that um, Whoopi showed signs, though, of not necessarily wanting to try as much as, let's say, Rosie Who wanted to come in? That's what Rosie believed. She said that Whoopi was not interested in making the show better, and Rosie said she was. Um, Talking to producers who work there, they essentially agree with that. They thought Whoopi thought that this is the show that we've always done. Why change things? This is the formula. And she wasn't... Rosie was very invested and is always very invested in trying to make things as good as humanly possible. Whoopi sees the view as a job. And she's not in charge, and she'll go in and do the job, but she doesn't necessarily want to revamp things. Because there's one part in the book, um, and let me plug the book again, Ladies Who Punch, the explosive inside story of The View, where um, Rosie comes in, uh, I don't know if it was the first day, the first week, and comes into the makeup room and says something like, you know, I'm I'm going to make Whoopi better, or we're going to make Whoopi better, implying that I'm here to... Elevate her. Elevate her. And Whoopi, no one had ever said that to Whoopi at ABC. And when Whoopi heard that, it was the end. Like, the two of them were not going to be friends. They weren't going to get along. Whoopi resented Rosie for trying to get her to not wear her earpiece, which is how Whoopi talked to the control room. But Rosie believed that the earpiece made her, like, more produced and thought she wasn't spontaneous enough. So she was, Rosie was trying to give Whoopi directing, you know, directions. And so it was just a complete disaster. It was so bad. There was a commercial where Rosie like walked off, you know, into the audience and needed a Xanax because she was upset that Whoopi had cut her off one day in the same way that she had cut you off, I think, on many days. I mean, where would you say that, I mean, besides so many things, is there a collective overall note That if ABC sat down with you and said, where did we go wrong? How would you answer them? If ABC asked me how they went wrong, I think that I think that the problem they had is they didn't know what show they wanted to put on. They didn't know if they wanted to be a political show or if they wanted to be more like the talk. And what I never understood and maybe you have some insight into this, is that The View was beating the talk in the ratings. So why were they trying to copy the talk? Like, I don't understand why. They didn't, you know, they went back to politics and then they wanted more pop culture. Like it was like they never really knew what kind of show they wanted to do. And then in all of this, there's a story about an executive wanting to make the view more like Good Morning America. Oh, yeah. And was that happening when you were there? That was happening. That was a rumor happening when we were there that it was going to, uh, they really wanted to make it a news, an extra hour of the news, a news show. And so people were freaking out about that. 
which I don't think was the smartest idea either. And they wanted to like sell stuff. Remember when they started doing like the sales and they were yes. like, buy these things on Monday. And that was like a GMA shtick. But like, why would people watch The View for, for, I do, for a it. bargain basement <laughs> garage sale? I have no fucking idea. So where are they? Where do they stand now when you look at The View and you watch it? Knowing what you know and you look at the TV, are they getting it? Are they doing it better? They're doing it better because the numbers are up, but also we're in a very political time right now. So conversations about politics do really well. I think they found a conservative with Meghan McCain. She you know, is able to be a Republican on that show in the way that I think a lot of other Republicans that they hired after Elizabeth Hasselbeck sort of weren't able to. Um, and full disclosure, Megan's a really good friend of mine. But I think it works now with the formula that they have. But it's also we're in a very political time with right. Trump as president. And I think women you know, are interested in these kinds of discussions. I'm going to go even as far as to say that even if it wasn't a very political time right now, that the view if it's going to be the view needs all different points of view and they never got it right after elizabeth they tried with elizabeth and it was working right but they needed someone like megan to come in immediately and the fact that when when i left they were having auditions and you talk about this in the book very well because i was very aware and you literally told the story verbatim um and i'm forgetting the journalist's name who was pregnant sc cup yes brilliant girl an amazing debater and they had her on stage in front of a live studio audience and she was going back and forth with Rosie and Whoopi and it wasn't they did not like her I think because she was very good at giving the alternative point of view right it was like they didn't actually want the conservative to be at the table but they did because they needed it for the ratings. So it was, it's like, what What do you want? Do you want someone that's going to agree with everyone or do you want someone that's actually going to be a conservative on the show? That's what was so crazy to me because I'm like, okay, we're leaving. You didn't want pop culture and you want political, but now you won't hire the person that can go toe to toe. I love Nicole. Don't get me wrong. But she can, you know, she can. She's not confrontational. She's not confrontational. But didn't they try to also make you into a Republican? They absolutely tried to have me come in. They would come in my dressing room and try to, you know, give me their point of view, which I would, of course, laugh and be like, I, I'm not saying. I'm not your puppet. You can get somebody else for that. But, but by doing so, me leaving, I thought, okay, great. Go and get someone that can do that. And I think Megan McCain, and I've said this before on Andy Cohen's show, without a doubt, my favorite alternative point of view on The View thus far. Right, because she's not afraid to say what she believes. And she actually believes what she says on the show, which is what you need. Right. You ap- and, and, and I want to see all, all points of view. And I think she does a good job of it. Um, the book is called Ladies Who Punch, The Explosive Inside Story of The View. Have you heard from Barbara? I haven't heard from Barbara, no. She did interview. I did. I talked to her in 2016. So it was a few years ago. We had lunch near her house, and I'd interviewed her before at length um, when she was retiring. And um, she was disappointed at what had happened to The View at that point because that's when they had brought in – it was after you had left, and they'd brought in, like, an army of women. I mean, there were so many women, and they were, like, rotating them in and out, and they couldn't figure out who was working at the table. And Barbara was frustrated that she didn't really recognize any of the women that were on the show. Right. I wonder how she views the book. How do you think? I do too. I haven't, I don't know if she's read it or if she's been following it, but I, you know, I'm going to send her a copy and I'm curious to see what she thinks. You haven't heard anybody from her camp at all? Um, I have had a conversation with someone from her camp, but I haven't talked to her directly. Who were you most excited to talk to in this whole experience? I was, I really needed Rosie for the book. I needed Barbara for the book. And I think the, the best interview I did, one of the best interviews I did was with you. Oh. Because you were honest and you were like, this is what happened. And you said it in a way, other people were sort of tiptoeing around the realities of the show, but you said it, you you gave me the experience that you had and I really appreciated oh, that. I'm glad. Well, thank you. Were you disappointed that Rosie came out saying, I'm, I'm mad I did this book? I was, but also she said that before she read the book. And I think she was... Um, she didn't like the pickup and the attention it was getting, and CNN um, had reported incorrectly that she had written the book in the same way they had reported, I think, a different outlet had reported you had written the book. And so she was upset about that, and so she she did an Instagram video and talked about it. But I think she, she, she wanted to make clear she didn't write the book. Is there anything looking now in hindsight that you would go, oh, God, I wish I would have taken that out? 
No, because the book just came out yesterday. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> and I wanted it to be on. I truly wanted to be honest. I went through a very extensive fact checking period where I went back you to did. everyone and checked stories. And I'm really proud of the book. And I think people are responding because it's a, the real truth of what happened on that show. You should be. You did a really good job um, telling the story. And I will I- admit, I know we have to go, that um, the facts that I know about The View seem to correlate exactly with what you wrote. Thank you, so, Jenny. Thank, thank you, you very much. You did a great job. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!